Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Esports Report. Pucket joined by Jack. Jack, welcome back from UMG. How was it, my friend? It was fantastic. Great weekend. I've been to three UMGs so far. This one was by far the most fun, very well organized, overall great time. You like watching upsets, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, this weekend was absolutely crazy. We, we were mentioning you could do like a top 20 plays of this weekend because there was such insane just showing of skill and just overall stuff that you haven't really seen through AW so far. There were some beastly moments, that's yeah. for sure, and it came from all different teams. Uh, you know, we covered our pool play top five. We did a top five from FaZe um, last night. I'm sure we'll have many more top fives coming out later in the week. Today, though, we're getting back on track. Pro League Week 3 is beginning, and so far we've had some interesting results. We've got two teams up top undefeated, Optic Gaming, Sitting up top at 5-0. and yep. And Denial, now 4-0. Yeah, both those teams looking very strong. You expected them to perform this past weekend at UMG. On the other side of things, though, the other team we're really talking about, Epsilon. I got to catch up with Swanee this past weekend. He said, online, we just don't have the communication. There isn't the energy in our matches. He said, that's the big thing we need to fix. They wanted to have a solid performance this, this past weekend. They did just that. Expect to see them turn things around this week. All right, before we jump into our Pro League recap from last week and preview what's to come tonight, let's go to our eSports report presented by Xbox One. Breaking news segment. We just saw it moments ago. There's been an official transaction Rise Nation making some moves, a trade with Elevate. Let's introduce you to our new lineup, starting with Rise. You'll notice a new face down there in the bottom left. It's not the pretty face of TJ Howie. It is Apathy yeah. coming over from Elevate. Do you think this was by choice, Jack? I, I Personally, I don't see how it could. Elevate looked super strong this past weekend, especially in their groups. Yes, they underperformed in the bracket, but when I heard who this trade was down for, obviously TJ Halley no longer on this team. Chino, Wheat, Apathy, and Goonjar, the new Rise Nation. I'm still baffled. I have no clue where this really came from. Chris, were you expecting any sort of trade like this? Did not see this one coming. A new yeah. Rise Nation was in a little bit of trouble. Off yeah. to a slow start in the Pro League. I thought they would have done something a little bit bigger of a move, uh, but and by bigger, I mean multiple players being exchanged, but I'm, I'm really kind of excited for Chino and Weeds. You're bringing Apathy into the mix. Oh, yeah. Not that he is a better player than TJ Halley, but in my opinion, he's a bit more explosive. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, Apathy, I think, is just overall, when I look so far at which player I'd rather have on my team, the veteran player in Apathy, I would love to see him really perform and lead on this squad. Rise, will it fix all their issues? Uh, I think that remains to be seen. But on the other side of things, we now have the Elevate roster. And this was and the big question for me is, TJ Halley, not 18. They just got announced for Gfinity today. So he's not even able to play out there. Here's a look at the Elevate roster. TJ Halley, Slacked, Classic, and Saints. Chris, is this a pickup you think is going to go far for them? This could be huge. Uh, you saw TJ playing alongside Slacked and Classic. I don't know why he got dropped or left behind to begin with. Yeah. I mean, TJ Howie won a bronze medal with this crew. He helped play so well for them at UMG Cali. He's been kind of a, a stellar player since the previous UMGs. I do want to make a quick correction uh, before we continue with TJ. Rise Nation does not have Goonjar. That was a trade done last week. Goonjar got traded for TCM. So Rise's starting lineup is going to be Chino, Wheats, Apathy, and TCM. There's a look, though, at oh, the starting yeah, yeah, lineup yeah, yeah. from Elevate. Yeah, no, that, that, that Breaking was Breaking news. That, that it gets confusing. Fix. That was a good fix, to say the least. So, obviously, that one right there, that trade coming down, really out of nowhere. Looking forward to seeing where those two teams go. And I wonder, when was this deal brokered? Is this yeah, like a exactly. Sunday night UMG deal that like, went down? Just kind of out of nowhere, uh, an impulse decision, possibly. We'll have to see. I do believe both these teams play tonight. So that'll be interesting to see where these starting lineups do favor. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah. We were totally unprepared for your breaking news rise and elevate. But thank you guys for keeping things interesting. This is yeah. move number two in Roster Mania. We'll talk about Parasite's move a little bit later in the show. If you guys missed it yesterday, he announced he's leaving E6. We have found his home. We'll discuss that in just a bit. But first, let's take a look back at some of the teams who didn't make any changes and what occurred for them last week in the Pro League, starting with Denial. You see, Denial stay perfect. How'd they do it? Well, they matched up last week, and it all started with a, a win over Elevate on Hardpoint Retreat. Yeah, yeah the, the, obviously both those teams very strong in Hardpoint, but Denial just looking so 
confident, especially online, finishing that game 200 to 173. Really, that slang power on denial is what comes through time and time again. This past weekend, what I did notice at UMG and what I'm going to be looking forward, forward to seeing on this team is how consistent Temp can stay because obviously he's absolutely great. This past weekend struggled though in some of the respawn game modes. I believe it really comes down to what roles they want for their team. They did a great job at time of rallying the drone in, especially in uplink. But this past weekend, th there were some there were some maps where he just absolutely fell flat, and it showed in them losing those maps. Which is crazy because I was keeping track of the stats. I had to do the post recap show on yep. Sunday night, and Temp's numbers overall pretty ridiculous. Yeah. He he dropped from being highest in the Pro League or, or top five in the Pro League to a 1.14 overall. So you're saying he had some bad games? Yeah. Still manages to put up a 1.14 throughout the weekend. The whole team, 1.14 from Temp. Hook a 1.24 was the highest on the squad and yeah. slash right behind him a 1.2. Well, that's, that's the ironic thing is that he was performing so well that those few games, it was more of a slow start and he wasn't really able to catch his rhythm and the score would begin to get out of hand. Okay. Would love to see replays kind of help him figure out exactly when they need him to push for a, a glass challenge on, say, comeback uplink or really fight against those teams who have two other strong ARs because right. that's when he really does begin to struggle. Obviously, you have Slasher who's always going to be pushing the envelope, get, being the aggressive AR for that team. It really came down for me when Temp would go, all right, let me go solo, try to control Glass, and they would die, but then do it again, and then do it again. It was just little things you would notice, and overall, I would say statistically, leading into Sunday, he was even stronger than that, and then it really began to tailor off. The only two teams that beat Denial at UMG this past weekend were FaZe, who won the event, nope. and Optic Gaming, who got second. Outside of that early G4G upset that somehow occurred in pool play. Yeah, that was pretty uh, Denial, though, looking very strong in their hard point last week against Elevate. I think Replays dropping a 40 bomb. A big yeah, slasher key was there factor in this. Which Everyone so had rare. questions. Can can replay slay? He's dropping numbers. Yeah, and when replays plays like that, I don't see how denial ever loses. And that was something that we talked about a lot with this team. Replays has had a history of starting off some hard point games very slow, even like double, almost triple negative, like eight and twenty-two. We've seen that before with him. If he can just get those kills inside the hard point, let the rest of these strong slayers on his team clear off the rest of the map, they'll be fine. Game number two. They wound up dropping, though. A little bit scary in search and destroy on Skyrise. Yeah, 6-2, to two, they lost that one. Skyrise, obviously, one of the new maps. Maybe they're just not as comfortable on it as of yet. Here you can see Slasher left in the one-on-three, not able to connect with those shots. But search and destroy. I personally think Denial looks like one of the best in this game mode. Obviously, FaZe this weekend had some uh, had some thoughts on that, going a perfect 8-0 and no in the game mode. But Denial, at the moment, if they can continue working on just making sure they trade every round possible, I don't see how they lose things. Now, coming into this game, uh, of course, Denial does lose this to Elevate. They were 4-0. They yeah. had a perfect search and destroy record. So, Elevate was able to take them down in this, but I, I'm wondering, you know, is it just the new map, Skyrise, exactly. that has them off, or what went wrong? Uh, you see, the one key thing that I noted, though, was it was multiple times that you see players in a 1v4, a 1v3. Yep. Denial was losing their guys in groups. Exactly, and, then, and that's the big thing. On the maps that they're comfortable with, you'll see them trade almost every single kill. Detroit Search and Destroy, they look absolutely unbeatable in it. But in regards to Skyrise here, they just fell flat. They have some fantastic search stats so far in Season 3. And that's really in what I talk about in the in 4-0 to start. This is the one they've dropped so far. Not too bad, man. Five games, you only drop one. In this series, though, it was all tied up going into this. Game number three, uplink on Detroit. And you saw Denial strike first. You saw Temp going in for the dunk. Uh, pretty interesting game here between Elevate and Denial. You looked at the kills. They weren't too out of hand. I mean, Replay is doing his patented ball control only, only yep. six kills, but they're able to put up five points in the first half. Um, I was pretty impressed with the way that Denial kind of controlled this map in the end. It was very close. They started off five points on the more difficult side. Once they had the easier side, only able to convert one more point, Jack. Yeah, and it really came down to a clutch play from replays in the final few seconds. You'll see that here in just a little bit. He really drove his team to the victory there in the objective play style. But this is what I'm talking about, Chris. If they can win all three respawns against a team like Elevate, and their S&D is that strong too, if they, can, if they drop one S&D, well, guess what? 
They're still more than solid in the series. Even if it goes to a game five, you fully predict them to be able to clutch up when Hook's been playing out of his mind these past few weeks, really through all of AW. But on this team, he's been the shining star, continuing to lead them to victory. There you see the finish. Replays gets the one-point clutch, and then it all just came down to defense. Slasher in charge of Garage. Hook fell, and this is where it got scary. You're like, can Elevate make the move? Oh, yeah, especially they, with their positioning on the map. They simply run out of time, though, waiting for that drone to drop, and you can see Hook waiting for the reset, protecting the base, time ticks down, Elevate goes up 2-1, and they were able to close it out. Yeah. 250-148, and game number four to take the 3-1 victory. Yeah, so that was a look at that series from uh, Denial. One thing you do want to point out, right at the end there, they switched to three battles to lock down the entire set of their yeah. map, not letting the opposing team grab that drone and push into their base. Pretty scary stuff. Yep. Denial, three of battles, three of the best ones you could find in the game. Absolutely. A lot of people have been tweeting me recently. They're like, why do you still consider Hook a battle player? He's been running subs since he was back on phase. I, I see the man with the bow in hand, and he just crushes with it I still. Mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things with Scump, always using the ASM1. I, when he uses the bow, you'd think that was all he ran because he's just as good with it. Both of, the, both of those players, very similar play styles. You gotta love how they can control their, their accuracy with either weapon. Absolutely. Now, another team we're gonna talk about here today is Optic Nation. Optic Nation, of course, bombed out of UMG, but coming into it, both yeah. Max and I had them in our top eight. We had them around the fifth, sixth finish spot. This matchup is kind of what influenced my decision. It was when they faced off against Epsilon, and it, it was really a, a rough start for Optic Nation. I mean, they lose the first hard point, 230 to 177, but yep. they're able to bounce back in the search and destroy. Yeah, they were able to come back into game number two. We do have a clip of this one. They won it six to three. Obviously, that's the key for Optic Nation. If they can take their, S their S and Ds, this is a team that can go very far, and it's what we've seen so far with this team. You can see Mochilla with the final kill cam here. Yeah, he Moch starts off 3-0. He Not went 12-5 and five in the nine rounds, leading his team to victory. He's just a player for the squad that has absolutely transformed their play style. Uh, 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 obviously, the strong bow presence on the map only helps Ricky and, and, and Embos in those objective game modes. But really, what you need to look out for in the, with, with this team is if they can take like here, they lost game number one. If they can just sneak one respawn, you always have to expect them to step up in game number five. Yeah, and you got to keep in mind, too, that, that Moch is playing off host the majority of these matches. Yep. Most of the teams playing against Optic Nation are saying, Moch, you are not allowed to host from Texas. You have to play off host, and he's still dropping ridiculous numbers. Surge has been his strength, but they were also able to win a, a, a respawn when it came to game three uplink. Yeah. Well, they went into game number three, and Ricky and Miracles just absolutely took over in the re in the objective game mode while they just let Mochilla kill everything on the map. He was hot it's in game slain, number two. Man. Went into game number three, dropped 36 kills, a 1.57 KD. And this is exactly what we're talking about with Optic Nation. If Mochilla can just control the map for this team and really let Miracles get that drone in for his squad, if Embos stays around even, but wins those gunfights and mm -hmm. get the map control. Obviously, it's not all about KD, but let's say in a comeback uplink, if he's getting control of blue when they're trying to push on to that base and score, and even if they can chain one together, one point plays together, that's when ON will take these maps. They won it nine to three, went up two to one in the series, heading into Solar Hardpoint. And now, uh, real quick on Optic Nation's uplink game, they only dropped it once, and that was to Envy on yep. Parliament. The brand new map, you could tell Optic Nation wasn't used to playing it. It's also the same game, if I remember correctly, that Octane dropped 42 kills. Moch couldn't get anything going. Octane had shut him 42 down. 42 and 19. He was just killing everything on the map over a 2.0 KD ratio. I mean, to even keep that close, I think they only lost that one seven to three, to even keep that in a two possession game is pretty crazy when Octane is just slaying everything in his sight. So look for Optic Nation to continue having some success in the uplink yeah. game. Hard point though is where it gets a little bit scary. Here in yep. game number four, we'll take a, a few glimpses at what was happening on the opposing side. Epsilon was able to dominate Drift 230 to 177. Here on Solar, it was 240 to 123, basically doubling their opponent's score. Yeah, and this was the thing we saw in this series. Remy in game number one, for Epsilon, drops 42 kills, 1.56 KD, with 13 captures and seven defends. They just couldn't get him killed inside the hard point, and he would just chain together time for his team. Here in game number four, very similar from Royalty. 
48 kills. You're seeing just the highlights right now on your screen. 1.55 KD, 13 caps, and 6 defends. Really, Optic Nation just doing a poor job of slaying out the hard point. And I don't know if this is a testament to Optic Nation being weak, or was this the first sample of Epsilon just showing how strong they are in hard point? Swanee, massive KD in both of the hard point games. The first time you ban Royalty's host, Remy goes off. Then game four, you ban Remy's host, Royalty goes just, off. Just demolished. These two are able to take over the game with the SMGs, and the strong play from Swanee has made Epsilon a true threat. We saw it on LAN even when they took down Optic Gaming and not yeah. one, but both of the hard points the first time around. Yeah, obviously ON losing both of those hard points in that series, but they had their game five in the back pocket and they went into it Search confident. And destroy. They were able to take home that SND. We have some of the major stats so far for Mochilla in season three, really leading this squad at the moment, a 1.68 KD ratio of that's first in the pro league, Chris. Absolutely dominant right now, averaging over a kill per SND round. So that means that even if he gets a first blood, he get, he'll get traded, and either way, he's gotten his kill for the round, helping his team get it done. It's been really impressive what Moch has brought to this squad. We knew Optic Nation needed a, a change after season two. Yeah. We keep talking about this guy because he keeps putting up ridiculous numbers. Mochilla, number one SD KD so far in season three, is definitely your player to watch in games two and five every single series Optic Nation's involved in. Yeah, and on the other side of things, Epsilon drops that game five, making them 0 and 3 in those major Game 5 scenarios that also dropped them to 0-5 in the Pro League. Pretty rough finish there for Epsilon, yeah. but they saw a little different story from the rest of the guys on the other side of the pond. TCM yep. picking up Aches and uh, TP. We saw them finish with a fifth place finish there at, at UMG Dallas, but yep. before we got to Dallas, TCM was able to take their first win in Pro League, and this is a big one. It all started in game number one. As we take a look at some of the hard point action, TCM able to take compound, and this is a map against ISO that I thought they should be able to play really well. Yep. Don't have to worry too much on your bow. A lot of close uh, range engagements throughout this one. And you really saw TP, just a little sample early on in this game of what he was going to do on land. Yeah, really. When I, I, I haven't been able to watch this map too much so far, Chris, because I was away for so long on a family vacation. But when speaking to the players this weekend on, on their thoughts so far of the new DLC maps, a lot of people actually enjoy this. They say it's oh, yeah. fun, it's refreshing. They actually do say as well that anchoring is key on this map to ensure that your team could hold down the spawns and, and just lock down the new rotations. They, they said, of all the maps, it plays the most like a Black Ops 2 hardpoint map. And from what I first saw, we first tested these maps, that surprised me, to say the least. It was really impressive to see, you know, ISO always hanging in despite being outslayed. But this was TCM from top to bottom. Let's take a look at the end game stats coming in from TCM. TP. 40 kills, 9 captures, 4 defense. You saw Aches also dropping a 40 bomb. The yep. dynamic duo back at it again inside of uh, hard points. And I'm excited for TCM, man. They had a really slow start. A lot of people thinking, oh, man, Aches and TP, they're going to have to either kick off Moose and Jert or Moose and Jert are going to have to go look for some new players. Yep. It looks like finally the team is starting to gel. Well, I got to speak to TP on his thoughts of his two new European uh, teammates on this squad. He said he absolutely loves playing with Jerd. He said if Jerd can just continue just slaying out those hard points you can see here in this game he finishes 32 and 36 nine captures 11 defends just doing everything inside the hill for his squad TP says he absolutely loves playing with him he said if moose can just drop some slaying numbers for this team he doesn't really see where they wind up losing there's an overall look at the stats yet again 40 and 37 from TP 40 and 31 from aches both of these players, though, TP and Jerd, finishing with nine captures. Yeah, and I think the most important stat to me there is Jerd's 11 defense. Yeah. He is playing the karma role. He's not always going to be the first one to break a hard point, but he's the guy that they leave to kind of sit inside. And on a map like Compound, Jerd with his snap reaction using that ASM yep. one, ferocious. From there, it was isolation taking the search and destroy. TCM battles back in uplink, though, and that led to a second hard point. Yeah. TCM on match point, and they were able to get it with some impressive play. Yeah, extremely close game here, finishing at 235 to 225 for TCM. Here's a look at the final hill. Obviously, that school hill on Detroit hard point, one of the most entertaining hills to watch because at the end of every game it just feels like it always comes down to this one yeah and you could see iso at this point in the game was up by about 15 so they had a nice lead coming in 
This is just a testament to TCM going clutch. You see Havoc, a great game for ISO, positive six with 10 captures. On the other side, Jerd was able to meet every single one of those stats, plus four on his end, 10 caps of his own. The defense were through the roof. Talk to me a little bit about TCM though, man. I mean, these weren't blowouts. The first one, 226, 169, pretty big lead, but the final one, you had to win it in the final 30 seconds. Is TCM a team you look at to be consistently strong in hardpoint? Uh, they need to be to be successful so far in Season 3, but the big thing is that both of these hardpoints were on ISO's host. They took both of them, which is very rare to say the least. Here you can see the final two kills coming out of Aix. All four players of TCM finishing with over 30 kills in this game. Everyone pulling their own weight. Great to see with this new squad. All right, guys, we have just one more team to talk about from last week, and that, of course, is Team Caliber. Off to a pretty brutal start in our pool play, in our regular season, rather, for, yeah. for Pro League. Team Caliber off to a slow start after going and making a major roster move. They brought in Theory, they brought in Neslo, and it's really not turning into hard point victories. You saw it against Optic Gaming. They yeah. ran into the brick wall. 218-109, Optic Gaming was able to spank them on Solar. Doubling their score, and really the two stat lines to look at. Formal, 46 and 29, Crim6. 41 and 28. They are just slaying everything on the map. No one even getting an opportunity to hop inside that hard point. Looking at that game right there, the back lot hill was just absolutely dominated by Optic Gaming all game long. It was really where they got a majority of their points and TCM, I mean uh, TCM, TK really didn't stand a chance. TK, they, they've been struggling hard point. Yep but they've looked okay in Search and Destroy. Here's a look at some of the highlights from that game at number two, TK versus Optic. Of course, this is Skyrise, the new map. Uh, the Bows seemed to be the thing that was working. They were struggling, keeping up with Optic Gaming and Hardpoint, just not knowing how to keep up with Scumpy and the ASM one play. But when they had Bows in hand and were able to make their shots count, TK really performed nicely. They finished the game six and four, Jack, talk to me a little bit about this matchup. What did you see from Team Caliber in their bounce back game two? Really, the impressive player for me had to be Neslo. Finishing that game eight and six, he had one defuse as well. Just locking down the middle of the map, you saw one of, their, one of his kills there on underground, which just stopped the flank from Optic Gaming from being successful, to say the least. They were able to take that map number two win, and Chris just goes back to saying, one of the new maps, how comfortable are these teams on it? I do believe, I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure of if we're going to be seeing them played at Gfinity as well in uh, just the in a, in a couple weeks. So that's I'm gonna something go ahead to really, and say yes. Yeah, that's something to look at to say the least. So if they wind up playing those, you're you're gotta fully expect these teams to improve on these maps in the next couple of weeks. You see some of the other highlights. Scumpy was really the one with a hot start for Optic Gaming here in a one on two, not able to get it done. Time ticking down, four two start. Um, impressive finish by by Team Caliber, and I think Neslo, like you said, he had a strong yep. game here. Definitely going to be a player to look out for throughout all of the SNDs. He brings a new energy. Also, Theory. If you didn't watch him back in the day, you didn't you didn't watch him back in his VVV time in, in Black Ops 2. He's one of the better snipers in the game. And on yeah. a map like High or Skyrise. Sniper is so crucial. Oh, it's something that completely locks down those long sight lines on the map. You can just see by the way the map's set up, it's just three lanes. If you can just be able to hit your shots, which you'll see from Attach and Formal, if Theory can do that for TK, this is a map they'll be able to consistently take. We moved into game three after the TK win, all tied up 1-1. OG stomped them 13-5 to there on Biolab Uplink, and then we moved into Compound Hardpoint. And Chris, it was another yeah. dominant performance for OG. They took that one 250 to 105. They had a bad time in their hard points. They, they yeah. totaled, what is that, 214 points in their two games of hard points. That's a good score for yeah. one game. Getting about half of what you need in two games combined. Overall, though, in hard point, the team is just one in seven. They've lost you know, two of their five series. Their average score... This is this is the this is the big thing. 155 only, yeah. and they're letting their opponent score 226 points. A 70 point differential, a point a five team KD. Another thing to point out in this series, Optic Gaming outslayed TK by a total of 93 kills in the two hard point maps. Uplink wasn't any different as Optic Gaming went positive 30 in that game as well. TK needs to start winning their gunfights more. They need to start working on overall their, their retaking of the hard points and then also just holding them down. 
To be quite frank, Chris, they need to work on everything. They need to just work on every aspect of hard. TK needs a little help in respawn. Too far away from going back up. I mean, you look at the competition, you have, what is that? One, two, th six of the 12 teams have a losing record so far. It makes sense, right? Yep. Orbit, the only team with an even record at two and two, everyone else above them is positive. But TK, I, I definitely think they could bounce back but not until they fix their hard point game. And that's the big thing, was that this TK squad, the way you look at it, they would have been really strong in CTF. When Neslo and Theory were both on rise in season two, they led them to a 24 and 12 CTF map record. Now that that's gone, they no longer have that game three that they can really get to keep them back on track. So let's say they lose that hard point, well, or game four, I should say. They lose that hard point in game number one. They can take the S&D if they're able to sneak an uplink. And there's your CTF. Right. There's your series 3-1. Done. Uh, that's basically it. Now that's gone. They have to require, They have to start taking some hard points if they want any chance to come back into season three. Let's look at some of the data from Capture the Flag. Theory, number one. Neslo, number eight. Both in the top ten for CTF caps per game during season two. Yep. Uh, those two players, of course, helped rise good to a 24 and 12 CTF record throughout season two. Mm -hmm. You know, they were the only team, if I remember correctly, there was one team, I think even, this was the only team with a positive CTF record. Yeah. They dominated with Neslo in theory. How do you, how do you convert this? What changes between CTF and Hardpoint? The big thing for me is right now they're being outslayed in their hard points by an average of 11 kills. That's second worst in the league. So okay. that's, that's where it first comes down. So to. just get kills. Yeah, they just need to start winning more gunfights. They need to just work together and calling out. I think that's a big thing. Calling out where the opposing team is spawning at and calling out where they're spawning from. That little bit of extra information can give you an advantage on the opposing team and also your overall positioning in the hard point. It's something that Crim6 is great at doing for Optic Gaming. If you hear the listen-ins with OG, he'll come completely and just always remind his team to call out where we're spawning, call out where they're spawning. Small because talk. It, 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 you, if you can left trigger where you think the opponents are coming from, you already have that fraction of a second advantage on getting the kill. You're good to go. Yeah. All right, guys, that is a quick rundown of what happened last week. If you didn't catch the start of the show, of course, Denial staying perfect, a big storyline there. We saw a glimpse of, well, it was a really good match. Optic Nation, Epsilon, really Kind of crazy to see those two teams going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yep. Optic Nation, heavy favorite in Search and Destroy. Epsilon, the heavy favorite in the hard point games there. Yeah. Um, TCM, they got their win against Isolation. It wasn't the prettiest win, but good games out of TP and Aches, just like we saw at UMG Dallas. And then, of course, here, TK going up against the number one team in the Pro League. Optic Gaming, after that win, takes the number one spot overall at 5-0. and After the commercial break, though, we're talking about some new things. Of course, we have a full night of matches still to come a little bit later on, starting at 6 o'clock, but they're going to be involving some brand new players. We'll break down the big move between Rise Nation and Elevate, as well as the new player on Isolation Esports. We'll be right back.